Hello brothers and sisters in Christ. Wanted to make a really quick video. So, uh, grace and peace be with you, brothers and sisters in Christ. And I'm saying that for a reason. Turn to 1 Corinthians, or 2 Corinthians, I'm sorry. Turn to 2 Corinthians chapter 1. I was uh, doing this study on the helmet for a hope of salvation for the brethren. And I was doing my uh, daily readings and God brought something to my attention about Paul. Okay, did Paul, was Paul really looking forward to the catching away of the body of Christ in his lifetime? Let's start with verse 1. Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, by the will of God. See, Paul was the twelfth apostle. And Timothy, our brother, unto the church of God which is in Corinth, and with all the saints which are in all Achaia. Grace be to you and peace from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. See, that's how Paul greeted people. Grace and peace, grace and peace. And in these last days, brothers and sisters in Christ, that's how we need to be greeting each other, and that's what we need to be praying for one another. I apologize if <laughs> a rooster hears me, thinks it's time to get snacks or something. But we should be greeting people with grace and peace, and we should be praying for grace and peace among the body of Christ. Blessed be God, even the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies, and the God of all comfort remember that comfort for we for, who comfort us in all tribulation that we may be able to comfort them which are in trouble we go through bad times we understand what you're going through the Bible talks about in other places where whatever you're going through the brethren are, there's other brethren out there going through the same thing there's other brethren out there that have gone through the same thing okay but who is our comfort Jesus Christ but more specifically, what is our comfort? We're going to get to that. Them which are in trouble, by the comfort wherewith we ourselves are comforted of God. We share that comfort with one another. Okay? What did we read when we were talking about the helmet for hope of salvation? When it talks to that catching away of the body of Christ, it says, Wherefore comfort one another with these words. For as the suffering of Christ abounds in us, so our consolation also aboundeth by Christ. The Bible says if we suffer with him, we shall also reign with him. Right now I got brothers and sisters, and we'll be doing another video, but we got brothers and sisters in Christ that are suffering a lot of tribulation from this wicked world. Okay. But where do we find consolation, comfort in Jesus Christ? Verse 6, and whether and whether we be afflicted, it is for your consolation and salvation, which is effectual and the enduring of the same suffering which we also suffer. So we go through it for you, and then you go through it for someone else. Okay. And for you, notice it says for your salvation. Like I said, I want, I'm going to be doing a whole other video where it talks about how we're supposed to treat the lost world. We go through such tribulation and persecution from the lost world, but how are we supposed to react? Okay. That's a whole other study we'll be doing. But suffering which we also suffer, or whether we be comforted, it is for your consolation and salvation. In this life, salvation. And here it is. And our hope of you is steadfast, knowing that as ye are partakers of the suffering, so shall ye be also of the consolation. We all go through suffering, brothers and sisters of Christ, in this life. We're all so desperate for the catching away of the body of Christ. If you got your helmet for a hope of salvation on and you haven't taken it off, Okay. It's a good thing. Verse 8. For we would not, brethren, have you ignorant of our trouble which came to us in Asia. This is Paul. That we were, and some of the brethren with him, that we were pressed out of measure above strength insomuch that we despaired even of life. Paul wanted to die. We want to die. We just despair of life. We want to go home to be with our Lord and Savior. We want to just die. What kept him going? But we had the sentence of death in ourselves. The old man is dead and buried. The sentence of death in ourselves. The old man is dead and buried. You say, why do you say that? What does that have to do with this? Because the Bible says you're bought with a price. You know what keeps me going in times when I feel like, Lord, I just wish, why am I still here? Why haven't you just killed me and brought me home? And then it reminds me, I'm asking God permission to die because I belong to him. God's the one who decides when we get to go home. Okay? I don't. But we have that sense of death in ourselves. Paul's like, my life is not my own. 
I wanted to die. I wanted to go home to be with my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, but my life is not my own. I'm bought with the price. That's why the Bible says, feed the church of God, which he hath purchased with his own blood. That's why Jesus said, take my yoke upon you. My burden is, what is it? My burden is easy, my yoke is light. You're bought with a price. That we should not trust in ourselves, but in God which raiseth the dead. Remember Paul was stoned once. God goes, uh, I'm not done with you. Get back up and get back to work. All right. But verse 10, who delivered us from, a, from so great a death and doth deliver us. God saved us in the past. He saves us in the present. But here's the important part. In whom we trust that he will yet deliver us. The catching away of the body of Christ? You mean that was one of the things that got Paul through that? That blessed hope? He had his helmet for a hope of salvation on. He's looking for that blessed hope that God will yet deliver us. In whom we trust that he will yet deliver us. The other thing that got Paul through here was he also helped together by prayer for us. That for the gift bestowed upon us by the means of many persons, thanks may be given by many on our behalf. Brothers and sisters of Christ, prayer helps. Prayer does help. But one of the things that God brought to my attention is that Paul was looking for that blessed hope to happen in his lifetime. It's what got him through all the hard times. No matter what hard times we have to go through in this life, Lord, you could come home, I mean, you could come to bring us home and call us home any day now. I get to go home with, I can get home to be with my Lord any day now, whether it's through death, through the catch and way of the body of Christ. And I'm here because this is where God wants me to be. There's times I want to go home. I get depressed just like the brethren do. I go through tri tribulation just like you do. I go through persecution just like you do, brothers and sisters of Christ. And there's times I sit out here and said, Lord, can't we just come home today? Can't you just call us all home? Or what about me? Can you just call me home? You know, you get that depression. It's like, and then the Lord really puts weighs it on my heart and my conscience and says, listen, you're there for a reason and you need to trust me. You need to trust me. You're where you're at for a reason. Trust me. And remember, remember, that day is coming. It might not be today. It might not be tomorrow. But that day is coming. It was a comfort to Paul. And Brother and Sister Christ just wanted to make this quick video just to encourage you that it should be a comfort for you. Remember what we read. Um, who shall separate us from the love of God? So tribulation, famine, nakedness, peril, sword... For thy sake we are killed all the day long. What do we read there? But we have this sense of death in ourselves. We could be killed all the day long. Brethren, we might have to die for the word of God before the time of Jacob's trouble, the catching away of the body of Christ before the time of Jacob's trouble. We might die before then. Right? If that's our calling, if that's what God's called you to do. But the important part that I want you to understand is, is no matter what's going on in your life, no matter what kind of persecution you're getting from this world, no matter how tough it gets, no matter how, because we're part of a family, no matter how dysfunctional our family gets, the body of Christ, no matter how bad things get out there, the number one hope that's going to get you through it is that blessed hope. That understanding that God has me here for a reason, however, He could take me home at any time. I need to stay focused on Him. That's the hope. We could go home any time now. I need to stay focused on Him and continue to live for Him. I don't. I can't. I, I might get into some other studies because I almost want to get into it here. But I'm going to get into some studies where it talks about how you're not supposed to become like the lost world to, to win the lost world. Okay? We don't give in. You don't reward evil with evil. You overcome evil with good. You continue to live a life of Christ with that hope in your heart saying, someday I get to go home to be with my Lord and Savior. And we talked about it. If you haven't watched the study, go watch the study on the armor of God, a helmet for a hope of salvation. Because there's brethren taking their helmets off, and they're trying to get you to take your helmet off. Paul had his helmet on. Okay, I'll read it again. In whom we trust that he will yet deliver us. Future tense. God will still deliver us. Now, did Jesus come back in Paul's lifetime? No. But was Paul looking for it? Absolutely. 
You're supposed to be looking with the life that you're living for Jesus Christ. And don't let anything in this world get you down, brother and sister Christ. It's going to sometimes, but when it gets you down, get back to the Word of God and get back to talking about, to God about the blessed hope. What helps me is I sit out here and talk to God. The catch away the body of Christ, how amazing it's going to be. How amazing it will be to have a body that's incorruptible. The place He's going to prepare for us. The fact that the whole body of Christ will someday be one. We're supposed to be one today, but we're not doing such a good job on it, brother and sister Christ. You have brethren that are falling in the trap of lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God. You've got brethren falling in the trap of being spoiled by philosophy and vain deceit. After the traditions of men, after the rudiments of the world. I'm pointing out here to the world. They're going the way of the world. I mean, the body of Christ is in a mess. So I sat here in that hope that someday the body of Christ will be one. We will all be of the same mind. We will all be of the same judgment. We're commanded to do that now, but we're definitely going to be that to catch away of the body of Christ. When we get to go to heaven to be with our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, to be with the brethren. We don't know all the brethren, but we will someday. I don't know all the saved brothers and sisters in Christ out there, but we will someday. We will be together. This is a blessed hope that's supposed to get us through the hard times. Keeping our eyes on Jesus Christ is what gets us through the hard times. Remember Peter. We talked about this on Craziest Man, Foolish Man. Peter, when he's walking on water, when Jesus is walking on water and Peter sees him and says, Can I come out? Call me to come out to you. If you be Jesus, call him out. He was doing great as long as he kept his eyes on Jesus Christ. When did he start failing the Lord and falling apart? When he took his eyes off Jesus Christ and started looking around at the water. The water represents the world. Jesus Christ is that blessed hope. He took his eyes off the blessed hope and started looking at the world. And started getting distracted by the world. And what happened? He started sinking into the world. And what did it take? Today, for what we're talking about now, it takes, sometimes it might take chastisement of the Lord. But what did it take? Jesus, he held me. Jesus grabbed him, pulled him back up into the boat. When we start falling in this world, brothers and sisters of Christ, and we start failing the Lord, and we start getting distracted what's going on, we need to get back to that blessed hope. We need to get our eyes back on Jesus Christ. Okay? And that's what will keep us going. You can fall and fall and break and fall to pieces, and God will put you back together, and He'll pick you back up. That's how much love He has for us. So I was reading that and just wanted to encourage the brethren once again. With the life that you're living, make sure you're looking for that blessed hope. Okay? In this present world, looking for that blessed hope. Let that blessed hope be a blessed hope to get you through all these hard times, to get you through all this, what's going on in the body of Christ, what's going on in the lost world, all of this. Okay? I just wanted, wanted to really encourage you that, hey, Paul, he despaired of life. What got him through? Prayers. Looking for that blessed hope, understanding that he's not his own. He was bought with a price. He belongs to God. I'm yours, Lord. If I have to die for you, I die for you. I'm yours, Lord. Don't forget that blessed hope. Okay? So I'm going to end this with grace and peace from God our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. My love for you, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Thank you for watching.